that many times we do not experience, we do not, I'm sorry, share what we experience because we do not want to be a burden to others. And that has been um, a very common cause, you know, a reason among clients of mine who are especially going through a loss, no, through the loss of a loved one to death, and they don't want to be a burden to others. So they restrain their own emotions, how they feel, and then they, they show a face that in reality they are not experiencing. Sometimes people close to us, family members or close friends, they impose a mask on ourselves. And why is this? Because, and I'll give you an example. Let's say that Lucy lost her husband and she goes to, to Martha, her best friend, because it's not to be walking around with, you know, our heart on the sleeves, as they say. No, but I mean with, you know, close friends, close family members to express how we are. So what happens if Lucy, who lost her husband, goes to Martha, let's say, her best friend, and she tells her, Martha, it is, it is so hard to go on without Mark. It is really, really painful to be without him. I don't know how I do it. And then Martha, to cheer her friend up, says, what are you looking, you know, what are you talking about? Look at you. You look great. You are taking care of your things. You even went back to the gym. You're doing great. What are you talking about? Because Martha wants to cheer her friend up. And then what happens is that Lucy then takes the mask back and says, yeah, you're right. I'm doing great. End of conversation. And what happened this? Martha imposed, quote unquote, the mask on Lucy. Because Martha, as being her best friend, wants her, the old Lucy back. She doesn't want to see her grieving because she, she, she's used to the old Lucy. So let's always pay attention when we are sharing with others, if we allow them to express how they really feel. Because sometimes even without us, you know, being conscious, we are doing that in people. Okay, so let's always pay attention to that. Now, where is the, the origin of this, of this word? Emotion. It comes from the Latin word ex movere, and that means to move out, to agitate or excite. So emotion always bring kind of sense of movement, okay? Because emotions are neurophysiological reactions, and that is the difference between an emotion and a feeling because emotions are more like when we react it's something physiological feelings are the self-concept that we have it's more mental it's more psychological so it's important always to pay attention to our emotions now this is a list of common emotions there are so many. So you can be annoyed, anxious, ashamed, blessed, bored, broken, cheerful. You have so many there. I don't know if you can take with your phone in a snapshot, you know, you can take a picture of those emotions. And if you, you know, you don't see there an emotion that you think it is very prevalent. And if you want to add it, it will be, you know, more than happy to hear that emotion. Okay. So we experience an array of emotions throughout our lives because of different things that we experience. Now, there are some emotions that people tend to call negative emotions. As I said, I like to just give them a place. And we talk about anger, anger. The emotion anger, 
sometimes is not it's not accepted in society especially with women no to express anger well to be angry to be angry it's something natural something caused the anger and what i suggest is for us to go there to go deeper and to just know what is causing that anger because let's keep in mind especially with anger if we do not express it what do you think do you think it's just going to go away by itself no nope. nope exactly and we bottle it okay we bottle it down let's say that you had a discussion i think we talked about this with the stress in the stress uh talk that you have a discussion with someone and you got angry you got angry with what happened no however you don't want you know you didn't say anything because you don't want to make waves quote unquote instead of being assertive and expressing your anger you just stayed quiet and so swallowed it next time that person does something else that bothered you and you may explode and that is what happens because you did not express your anger in an assertive way at the moment because that was the timing so that is something that we want to learn how to express the anger i am angry because so and so and so generally and we talk about this you know a little later but i'm going to mention it now generally and some people do that when they get angry if they had a discussion they say you make me so angry you because you so so and so i highly suggest that instead of saying that you make me so angry to own it i am angry because you said this and this and this i am angry because or i feel angry because you did not do what you said you were going to do whatever no always owning your emotion and very important whom are you angry with this of course can be a whole talk only about that because we can be angry with different people we can be angry with people you know family members friends you know colleagues people around us we can be angry if we lost a loved one even if it you know if it doesn't seem like that but sometimes it happens because I've heard that sometimes people get angry with a person who died. People can be angry with themselves. You know, we can be angry with ourselves something that we did or didn't do or said or didn't say. And also at a spiritual level, we can be angry with God. Okay? We will be talking, we're going to have um a talk on spirituality. We're going to be talking it's not religion but you know the concept of God will be within obviously but we can also be angry with God and if that is the case I suggested that how can you express that how can you get rid of that well many times it's been said and I have said it that it may help you write a letter write a letter to God express it how you feel because what you want is to release yourself of that anger okay because anger can be a poison to our soul okay now what about guilt a uh, guilt is another of those guilt is another of those emotions that are considered to be negative okay again it is an emotion what is causing you to feel guilty where is that coming from when do you feel guilty please if you are going to be talking i remind you just to put mute on the mic please because that way you know uh, we can continue i have decided to leave it open for this conversation because at the end we're going to have like 10 minutes to you know share but if i say something and you want to make a comment please by all means that makes it more interactive okay now with guilt how do you deal with your guilt and guilt is another of those emotions that can be very prevalent very common 
when we lose a loved one. And if that's the case of any of you, I cannot see everybody there, but my heart is with you. If you lost a loved one to death and you feel guilty, always, always remember that it is a common, it's one of the most common emotions I hear from my clients, that they feel guilty of they didn't do, of what they did, of what they said. Please always remember what was your intention. What was your intention? That is what makes the difference, okay? And again, process, process that emotion. Now, these are different strategies to cope with feelings. The felt sense exercise, we're gonna be doing all that. Body scan, color identification, clapping, keeping a journal, and ending the sentence, okay? I'll be right back, Lydia. Okay, Maria. Okay, with felt senses, this is a meditation that you can also do with yourself. When I do the seminars and when I do some groups, hi, Luli, I'll see you there. You may recognize this. Hi, Vero. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> Beautiful, thanks. And you may recognize this. When we talk about felt sense meditation, great that you took a picture, Vero, because with this, I've done it in groups. So we want to focus, to get in touch with our emotions. You want to get in touch with yourself and pay attention to the area between your neck and your waist. That's the felt sense area. Luli, you may remember this from our seminar our felt sense area. So you go there and you pay attention where you are feeling the emotion. Do you feel it in your heart? Is it in the stomach? Now, as you just recognize that, you take a deep breath in, taking a deep breath in, and as you exhale, you let go of that emotion that is disturbing you. And then you think about something that gives you peace. You think about something that's beautiful, that gives you peace. Maybe it's the beach. Maybe it's a beautiful place. Maybe it's a baby. Maybe it's someone who gives you peace. Whatever it is. Maybe it's a color. Now, as you have this image in your mind, repeat in your mind the word peace. The word peace. And again, take a deep breath in and you repeat the word. And one more time, say the word peace again. You slowly open your eyes. This is a mini meditation that I wanted to leave it there so you can take a picture and you can do it yourself because it may help you replace a disturbing emotion with one which is you know, more beautiful, such as peace. Now, this one, and we're going to do this, believe it or not, this one, it's something that can also help you release disturbing emotions. Let me tell you something. This works amazingly, amazingly. And I learned this some years ago when I was in a conference that I attended, ADEC, for you know um from the association for death education and counseling and this was given this was a workshop with a lady from hong kong you know that they are all together with body mind connection and we were talking about how to release in that context was grief because it was about bereaved people no but you can do this whenever you're experiencing a disturbing, disturbing emotion, such as anger, such as anxiety, and we're going to do it together. So be good sport because we're gonna do it together. We are not in the same room, but we are all connected from heart to heart, okay? So what we're going to do is this. We are going to start clapping, and I'm going to start, when I say start, we are going to do it for 30 seconds. When I go to 30, I'm going to tell you, stop. 
And then what I want you to do when I say stop, I want you to just separate your hands very slowly and then to bring them back in very slowly, okay? We're gonna do that because the intention is that you notice the end, yes. Sorry for interruption, but I think people should be all muted because there is so much static noise here and there. Oh, you are worried, uh, you are okay. Now, please. Okay, perfect, so please, everybody, just let's go mute because we don't want any interruption, especially now we're gonna be clapping. So a good idea, Parvin. So please, everybody mute. We are going to be on. Ah, uh, you go into the. You go into up. You know the the where all the little things are. Whether you see a mic, you just hit the mic and you're gonna see it with a cross like that. You know, then it's going to show that you are mute. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, perfect. Beautiful. I can see that. You are all muted. Then, when we finish, we're going to unmute it like 10 minutes before 4, and then we're going to be able to share. Okay? Thank you, Parveen, for the, for the um, suggestion. I love to hear suggestions because I want to be this the best for everybody. Okay, so now we're going to do this, this exercise together. Do it with me. I will not, I am not with you, but this is for you, not for me. We're going to be clapping. I'm going to start, when I say start, we're gonna go for 30 seconds only. And then when I say stop, you're going to just separate your hands very slowly. And then you're going to bring them back in very slowly. Okay? So, and you clap hard. We are going to start now. One, two, three, start clapping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve. Harder, harder, harder. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, harder. 7, 28, 30. Stop. Stop. Now very slowly, very slowly, separate your hands. Separate them and just feel the energy between. Now you put them closer again, closer and closer, and then you can separate them again. This exercise can help you release disturbing emotions. It's amazing how it helps because the thing is that our emotions are energy. So it all gets trapped in. When we change our physical state, we change our emotional state. We say that a lot in NLP, and believe me, it does help, okay? So do this. Some people even do the jumping jacks. Some people, it's to change your physical state, you can change your emotional state. Okay, now something else that we can do with feelings is to keep a journal of feelings. Because I can tell you, and I was just sharing, when we started the, our meeting, there were you know two ladies who knew about my, that my mother died not too long ago, and they were beautifully saying their condolences. And I was telling them that grief is it's a moment at a time. It's not a day at a time, it's a moment at a time. And this comes perfect because with the journal that I'm showing to you. You can see here different days of the week and then here different hours in the day, okay? So what I suggest you do is to notice and better it's journal of emotions rather, rather than feelings, emotions. So what I want you to notice is to pay attention. Well, these are random times. You can use, you know, times that you want. But let's say that uh, on Tuesday at 7 a.m., you feel, let's say, calm, calm, you put it down. Then at 11 a.m., you may be angry, anger. At 3 p.m., you may feel frustrated, frustrated. At 7 p.m., maybe you feel calm again. It is like that because our emotions, so it's instead of feelings, emotions, because then that allows you to see if you keep track of the whole week and you can do this, you know, like in, a, like in a cardboard, something that you can expand in a horizontally, 
because you will notice how many moods you can have throughout the day, throughout the week. And that is important because some people tell you, may tell you, I'm always depressed. I'm always anxious. I'm always angry. And if you keep track of this, you may notice that it is not the case. We're talking about, you know, if you are not clinically depressed, because if you are clinically depressed, that is another thing, obviously, no? Or if you suffer from, you know, GAD, general anxiety disorder, that you're always anxious, that is something else. But it is natural to feel anxious, angry, sad, happy, go back to sad. It is like that. Okay? So pay attention to how your emotions change throughout the day, throughout the week. Now, this is something very powerful. And ladies, because I think that we do not have any gentlemen, right? Well, if you do this, it will be fantastic. And I highly suggest you do it. I have, in, you know, my center, at my center, I have a mirror, actually. And with some clients, I've done this. Not with all of them, some. And it is to do this. You just come and you place, you know, you put yourself in front of a mirror. In front of a mirror. And you say out loud how you feel. How you feel. You say it to yourself in front of the mirror. You can say it with your eyes closed. Because, you know, if, if, if it is too intense for you to see yourself, say it how you really feel, close your eyes. This is for you. This is for not anybody else. And then when you feel empowered enough to confront how you really feel, then you can open your eyes and validate your feelings to yourself. Validating. Because remember this, by acknowledging our feelings, we own and accept. Okay, so this is an awesome exercise to do. I highly suggest you do it because you connect, you know, with your essence and you can go even deeper because when you go into the mirror, go and just see yourself through your eyes because, you know, go, go deeper than your reflection, your face, no? Go even deeper. Look at your eyes and connect with who you really are. Because it's been said that our eyes are the, um, the door to our soul, right? So go there. This is a very powerful exercise to do. Now, what did Pablo Picasso said about colors? Colors, like features, follow the changes of the emotions. I don't know if it happens to you, but Colors have a great influence in us. And this is something that you can do with, with ribbons. You can just take ribbons of different colors and see, okay, take a ribbon, let's say, of, of yellow. What does it mean to me, to me? What this color means to me? White, from, for some people, I would say many people, represents peace. Red, it's been said, it represents anger or power so you may notice that when you when you feel a certain way you wear a certain color of clothing that's why for example when we are mourning generally that's why black it's a sign it projects to people how you are feeling you're sat inside and then you project uh, with black it's interesting because when after my mom died, two weeks after she had died, I never thought I was going to do that. But as we say, grief is unique and I did it. I had a Facebook live in Spanish and I remember that that was um, a decision, a conscious decision I made because I was wearing black, you know, totally black. And then I said, well, but I was feeling in my heart, I was feeling peace, pain and peace at the same time. And I said, well, I'm going to do this Facebook Live and it's the first time I'm going to be talking about this. So I wanted to project peace to people 
because that was in my heart to others. And I wore white blouse and I had a black scarf, but it was black, white my blouse because colors project to others how you're feeling inside. So pay attention. Whenever you wear certain colors, what does that represent to you? What does that say about how you're feeling that day? You may even notice when with um, <laughs> the power suits for women, you may notice, and you may notice this in first ladies, they wear red. The red suit, it's very powerful, okay? That has a meaning. They don't do it just because. No, it, it's, it is to show power, to show empowerment. Now, I ask you, are you aware of your emotions on a regular basis or do you get distracted in order not to go there? Because sometimes we don't want to go there. You may remember if you were last week, we talked about our shadow. Remember that? We talked about our shadow, that we all have a shadow. Some are really dark. Some are kind of light, however, we all do. Sometimes we do not want to get in touch with how we feel because we don't want to acknowledge that. However, be true to yourself because the most important relationship you can have is the one you have with yourself. And the only way you can really have a meaningful relationship and a real one an authentic one is if you are true to your emotions. Because you know what? It doesn't help if you pretend something to others when inside of you, you feel something else. Because that's you. Your life is meaningful. You are precious. Get in touch with that. It is easier sometimes, and this is very interesting, it is easier sometimes to help others deal with their feelings than dealing with your own. Because sometimes we can be a great listener. We can be great listeners and tell, you know, others, you know, you, you give your, your shoulder that they can lean on your shoulder. You are there for them. You can help them deal with their feelings and emotions. But when it comes to you, you put a wall and you don't go there. Pay attention, okay? Because it is important. Also, remember, as Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. It all starts with you. Put the mask on, just like in the plane, on the plane, before you put it on others. If you can help others deal with their feelings and emotions, go in and help yourself as well. And pay attention. I'll just stay one second quiet. One second. If you have a paper, you can write it down. If not, just think about it. Just think. Which is your most prevalent emotion? Just one. Just choose one. Just think about it. And just write down the first that came to you. Okay? Or if you don't have a paper, just keep that in mind. Now, here. Describe three ways that you deal with challenging emotions, such as fear, anger, or guilt. We all experience fear. Actually, I, I do a workshop on fear, but I don't think we're gonna do it ah, in, this, in this series. I think we'll not, but I'm going to bring some. Because fear, it's very, it's common, it's natural, we all experience fear. All of us, animals experience fear. What matters is what do we do with the fear? So you want to pay attention and just write this for you. Remember, the idea, my intention is that I bring this, but then after our conversation, either today or later, you know, on the weekend or so, you take the time and do the exercises that would help you to describe the ways that you are dealing with challenging emotions, okay? To see if you are facing them or if you are coping with them in ways that are not the most beneficial. 
Now, what do you do when others share with you how they feel? This is something that I also want to bring to your attention. For example, when someone comes to us, besides listening and all that, and tells you, for example, let's talk about the situation that we are all experiencing, which is the pandemic, no? the, the COVID-19. If you have a friend that comes to you and tells you, I'm so anxious. I'm so anxious with what is happening now. I cannot go out. I cannot go to Publix. I cannot go anywhere. I am so anxious. You, maybe with the best of your intentions, you may tell her, don't be anxious. That's okay. Nothing is going to happen to you. You have your mask. You take care of yourself. You wash your hands. Don't, you know, don't worry. Don't be anxious. Do you think that person is going to stop being anxious because you told her don't be anxious? I don't think so. Because what we are doing is we are suppressing how they feel. So maybe she tells you, yeah, you're right. You don't know. Maybe, maybe you're right, maybe not. But it's a risk. You're not sure. So the best thing If someone comes to you and tells you either that they are anxious, that they are sad, that they feel guilty, that they are scared, all those disturbing emotions, the best would be what makes you feel anxious? What makes you be scared? And just go there. That would be a way that you can help more your, your friend if you just hold the space so they can share with you how they really feel. Now, emotions are a source of information because in reality, they are letting you know what is happening in any event that happened, how you are reacting. It is a great source of information. So do not ignore your emotion. Do not put it under the rug. Face it, because remember, What you ignore doesn't cease to exist. It is only repressed. And maybe later on, a trigger comes and boom, all that emotion that has been repressed comes up to the surface. Okay? So pay attention. And especially what is causing, which event is causing that emotion. Now, we have primary and secondary emotions. And this is interesting, primary and secondary emotions. For example, you may feel anxious, you may feel angry, you may feel sad. Those would be primary emotions. Now, what about this? You feel anxious about being anxious. And sometimes this, many times actually, is what could generate into a panic attack. Because you may feel anxious and then you're like, oh my God, I am anxious now. And then, and then you become anxious for being anxious and then it escalates and then you get more anxious and then you get more anxious and what happens? It can end up having, you can end up having a panic attack. So those are secondary emotions. Always paying attention. For example, you may feel embarrassed for feeling sad and you are crying. This may happen, you know, um, it happens because of society, you know, it may happen to men, that men have it harder at times because, you know, they're supposed to be this stoic, not showing, you know, that they're sad with crying. When I say that, you know, if you're able to show your expressions through crying, through tears, you're very strong spiritually, you're connected but people may get embarrassed will be the secondary emotion over the primary that will be sad. Feeling ashamed for being, having been angry. They got angry for something and then they are so embarrassed. Feeling guilty for being relieved. This is another one that is common and I have seen it a lot with when, when we lose a loved one you know, to death it may happen that maybe it was 
a long illness and you were taking care of that person and you saw that person suffering, maybe, you know, a terminal illness, and after that person dies, you are relieved, you know, of that. You know, as that common phrase that I don't love it, but I'm going to say it but people, because people say it, that now they are resting. And then maybe you feel relieved. You know, it was too much now, you know, they're in peace. But then you might feel guilty because you felt relieved. So that is a secondary emotion. Feeling angry about feeling angry. Okay? You get angry and then you go, how in the world, why did I get angry? So you are angry with that. Now, feeling guilty for feeling happy. That is another one that is very important for us to consider. Because when we feel guilty, let's say again, that you lost a loved one to death, and then suddenly, you know, life continues, you, you know, you keep on, you move forward. Remember the difference, moving, move on, moving forward. We'll talk about that in grief, but move on, you forget about the person. Moving forward, you bring that person, that love, you know, that memory with you. And then you start, you know, you have a happy moment and you experience joy. And then suddenly you may say, oh, how in the world, you know, I can be joyful now if I'm supposed to be grieving? And then you feel guilty because of that, okay? That's very, very common. So pay attention to those emotions as well, primary and secondary emotions. Now, do you allow someone to make you feel an emotion? That is a question that I pose to you. Do you allow someone to make you feel an emotion? Like, you know, what we were saying before, that I was saying that, okay, you make me feel. Do you allow someone? Well, see what Eleanor Roosevelt said. No one, and this is huge, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And in this case, it's inferior, but it can be any other emotion without your consent you have the power you have the power to allow that person to just you know um make you feel that way or not so pay attention to that okay now because of the importance of being present to our emotions these are four steps that we can take when we experience an emotion. One is to acknowledge the emotion, to acknowledge it. I am feeling, let's say, anger. I am feeling angry. Validate it. What is making me feel angry? Validate the emotion. Then you can process the emotion. And how can you process the emotion? You can either talk to someone, you can either write on a journal, you can either go for a walk, go for exercise, pray, whatever it is that helps you process the emotion so it doesn't stay stuck with you. So you can there release it. Because remember, emotions that we don't pay attention to, especially disturbing ones, can make us stay stuck. And we stay there. And they do not disappear by themselves. We stay there. And then in order to just let them go, you release them. Something else I wanted to say about an emotion. Because an emotion is... We feel something, you know, and we feel like this. And if we have our heart filled with, with pain, filled with guilt, filled with anger, we are not allowing another emotion to come in. That's why it is so important to do the four different things. I am going to say something that definitely just fits with what I'm saying. And some of you who are there, may have you know heard this from me before and I, I like it a lot it's a fable and it's about you know when we 
stay with an emotion that is disturbing and we carry it in your heart and it does not allow us to continue with our lives. The, the fable is like this. There are two monks, Buddhist monks, that are walking around and they want to cross a river. One is an older monk and the other one is a young monk. He just joined the monastery. So they're just walking and they go to a river and then on the side of a river, there's this woman who wants to cross the river, but the woman cannot swim. So she asks the older monk if he could carry her, you know, on his back to cross the river. And the old man said, yeah, sure, come in. So he carried the woman and when they were on the next, you know, the other side of the river, the woman just went down, said, thank you so much for, you know, carrying me on your back, and she left. They continued, you know, walking, the old monk and the young monk. After an hour that they were walking, the young monk turned to the old one and said, that's so amazing. What? That's amazing what he just did. That's so embarrassing. What is it? We are monks. We are not supposed to touch a woman and see what you did. You carried that woman on your back and you crossed the river with her. The old monk turned to the young one and said, I left that woman an hour ago and you still carry her. And we see the difference. It's up to us if we carry an emotion that is disturbing to us if we carry it. So pay attention, you always are able to release an emotion. Now, of all the things that we have talked about that I have presented here, the techniques, which one do you think you are going to embrace? Would you like the clapping one? Would you like to do the one that you face yourself in the mirror? Would you like to go into the felt sense area and do the, you know, the meditation to keep a journal of your feelings? What about if you're going to use colors to help you get in touch with who you are? And the other one that I mentioned is the body scan. If you have done mindfulness training, you may recognize how we do a body scan. Because what you do is you get you know, in a comfortable position and you close your eyes and then you start noticing every single area of your body. And you start you know, from your head, you go down to your feet and you notice every single body part. And if you have a part in your body that feels tight, you know, pay attention, go there to see which emotion. Maybe it's talking to you. Remember that our body, you know, people that do body work, I know Vero does that body work. It's, you know, our body, talk, you know, talks to us. Pay attention. What is that telling you? It happened to me once, I was incredible. I was doing a meditation with a lady, a client of mine. She came for X reason. And when she was very deep into meditation, suddenly her leg started shaking. And she was kind of, you know, upset with that. And I made, that's okay, I said, allow it, that's okay. And then when we processed that, she was so amazed because she said, wow, when I was doing the meditation and all that, it was focusing on something else. And when my leg started you know, to move, it gave me the message of the real reason of me being upset. Our body, it's incredible. It's that connection of body-mind connection. So pay attention when something is you know, hurting you, it's bothering you, you feel uptight, go there and see what is the emotion behind, okay? In case you need to pay attention to that. So when we have now our moments together to share, see and let us know which of the techniques you are going to embrace to process your emotions, to validate and express your emotions. 
thank you so much and there as they asked me you know at the beginning the first time there is my website and that's my my email as well info at and my phone okay so now we can open the mics and it will be great to hear your comments questions comments what do you take with you out of our conversation today? Oh, okay. Okay. Who wants to, to share? Well, I appreciate, this is Dee. Dee. I appreciate everything you have said. Um, definitely. That we carry our emotions very deep inside of us. Yeah, we do. Um, not always can we express them to everyone. Not everyone can understand or want even to hear. I know. Have their own issues, their own things to focus on. For instance, when I met you a long time ago, we connected because you had just broken your leg. Mm -hmm. Guess what? As I speak to you a week ago, I broke my uh, my my uh, my leg. Oh. And as a, my fibula actually on my right leg. Ooh. So as I'm talking to you, I am in pain. So my whole body feels like it's been trampled on. Mm -hmm. So I cannot only fix my emotion on one part because everything hurts. I hear you, I, I hear fell, you. I fell flat on my both legs, I'm not on my both feet, mm -hmm. on my heels actually. Yeah. On a step, uh, one of those stools that I was reaching for something in our, um, food closet, uh -huh. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So I have been very, very depressed. I send you my, I send you my heart. Why did I have to get up on that thing? Uh -huh. I have a six foot uh, husband that I could have waited until he came in wow. to get whatever I needed. But no, I had to do it my way. And now I will probably be laid uh, down for between six and 10 weeks. I hear you because, you know, I was there. However, and thank you for sharing, something that will help you most definitely is to write down how you feel. To write down how you feel and to own your emotions and process them. Not to judge them. Because, ah, that's something I didn't say. Sometimes we judge ourselves, okay? Yeah. So it's something important to do. Thank you, thank you, Dee. Anybody else? Well, I think writing really uh, works for me. Maria, that helps you writing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I guess I don't want to feel those emotions. That happens. And that's why I procrastinate on writing. Yeah. And when, when you write after you write, do you feel a difference? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, because let's keep in mind, when we write, we transfer our emotion to the paper. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Maria, for that. Lydia. Yes, Parvin. I uh, also do writing a lot, but I never go back, and I don't know if, if there is a technique for that. Do you suggest to just throw it away, like the letters which were never sent? I do that. Sometimes I write letters to my children when I'm hurt for something little, which later on I figure out it was little. But when I'm hurt, I write down and then uh, I don't send that letter or text or thing to them. And then later on, I feel good and I'm happy that I haven't sent it. What is your suggestion? Thank you for the question. Because, and there is a difference, you know, when we write, to download, if we can say it that way. When we are writing to download anger or resentment or frustration, whatever, what I suggest is to write it, to write it, write it, write it, get it out, get it out, get it out, and then rip it off. That's for me. You know, that's, that's what I do. You know, if something, you know, is really painful, you know, and as I shared, you know, with my mom, something painful that I miss her, especially at the beginning, right, right, and then let it go. If there is a journaling that you are processing, if, you know, you are facing, um, focusing on gratitude, if you are journaling about emotions and all that, that is different. 
when we are journaling. That's different than when we are just downloading emotions. So in that case, I would, I would rip it off. Great, thank you for the question. Awesome, Parveen, thank you. Anybody else? I think it's, it's, it's good to, to write things down because then you actually physically do something. You are having a pen in your paper, you're in your hand and you have a paper and you are actually really doing the physical thing. Yes. And writing it out, what you are thinking in your head. Yes, and I that. I believe it's also good uh, to read it again. That's yes, good. exactly, because it depends. It depends on what. Do you know that some? And thank you, Bettina. And nice meeting you. Thank you for being here. Nice Beautiful. Hi, yeah, Linda, Bettina. I know it's been a while. And you yeah. know what? That. Uh, what we did, we also did this, Luli. You may remember, well, Luli is Maria Luisa. You know, I call her Luli. Yeah. We call her Luli. That in the seminar we did, and you may remember this, Parvin, because we did this. So, Parvin attended my first seminar in the principles, Luli. It wasn't at, at the Marriott. Marriott Hotel, oh my God, was 2011, right? In 2011. Yeah. 2000, oh my God. And we did the same on the, the, the ritual that writing things that we don't want, that we don't like in our lives and all that. And you, lady, you ladies may remember that we put them in a paper shredder. Do you remember? Yes. In a paper shredder to just release all that and let go. So that is something that we can also do with disturbing emotions, okay? Uh, There's so many things we can do. Yeah. Huh? That day, um, when I did that, I started crying like crazy. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's incredible. Those things are amazing because do you know what? We keep so many things inside. We do. And the beauty is to go there. And at times, as Maria said, because it's typical, sometimes we delay it because we don't want to go there. But if we would just see it a little further, how, how well we're going to feel afterwards, then we would do it. So thank you, thank you for sharing. And well, it's four o'clock. Anybody else who wants to say something because before we say goodbye? I have one more question. Yes. Um, you suggested to deal if you're angry with somebody and try to be assertive and, and say what you have to say. But what is the best time to do that? Because if it's a hot discussion, and then you that's not the best time of course but you have to good. make a point some other time exactly right. yes because when you are in a hot discussion and this is great that you asked that i think i'm going to talk about that somewhere else in another topic remember that for a discussion to happen it takes two you know as they as they say it takes two to tangle it takes two okay so the way you present your emotion, your anger, but if you feel that it's going to be a discussion there, hold it back, say, okay, I want to talk in another time. So when the, you know, the hot temper is down, then you present your point of view, your point of view, how I feel when we had that discussion yesterday, whatever, I felt so and so and so. Because if we do it sometimes when it's hot, then people get angry and the other one gets defensive and the other one gets offensive, then it can turn a small discussion into, into a huge fight. Mm 